Welcome to Golden Ticket Podcast Quarantine Edition. Yay! <laughs> because that's pretty much what everybody is doing right now. Everybody is streaming, live chatting. There mm. are brand new apps coming out so that you can watch movies from the comfort of your own home with other people. And I think the term people are now using is quarantine streaming. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought that was something else. Never mind. I don't know. I, I know how your brain works, so I don't want to see <laughs> where that would have It has gone. something to do with Dutch porn, but yeah, anyway, that's that's irrelevant. Please continue. Please. So not a Dutch oven. <laughs> Maybe that... Yeah, we really need to move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think everybody can expect more of this kind of crap today because there was no... There's no game show episodes. There was meant to be two. No. There was zero. So we, we have no game show. I didn't to have to about. do research for this for this <laughs> podcast. I, I didn't have to like. Okay, when I say I didn't have to watch an episode of your game show, it's not like I'm forced to do so. I mean, I, I like to watch them anyway, but I didn't have to sit there and take notes and try to remember the names of the contestants and stuff. So yeah, this is this is much easier. I'm not even wearing pants right now. Thank God, I l I'm very happy with where the camera is positioned. I don't I don't have to see anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's so one anyway, way to get my videos. So anyway, how you doing? How's how's the apocalypse treating? We should call this a a podcast lips because it's a podcast. No, that doesn't work. Um, you no. can edit that out. So how you doing anyway? <laughs> I'm I'm fine. It's it's been somewhat entertaining for me. Just I mean I know it, this is bad. Things are bad. Coronavirus is mm. bad. These are these are not good times. But when everybody's like, oh my god, I can't leave the house. I can't do anything. I have nothing to do. And I'm just like, welcome to the past eight years of my life. This yeah yeah. It's, it's nothing new for me. People are like, I don't know what to do with myself. And I'm just like, <laughs> you find shit to do. Read a book, watch mm. a movie, binge watch a TV series, listen to some music, take some naps. This is pretty much Furiously what I do. masturbate. Or that. That, that always works yeah. too. I mean, <laughs> basically my life has not changed. I mean, one of the fortunate things of already being unemployed is I can't lose my job. So, mm. I beat everybody to that front. So, <laughs> it's funny when people are coming up to me, and, and actually people have been messaging me going, how the fuck have you been doing this for eight years? And I'm going, I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't really an no, optional that... thing. Yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense, because, um, yeah, like, it, it is a shock to the system. I mean, as, as you well know, like, I've come from working around 50 hours a week with two mm. jobs down to having only one job now uh that luckily i work from home so that job is safe and i am so freaking lucky um i mean yeah there's no way i can really complain about my situation because of course there are people out there who you know lost their one job and are now yeah i don't even want to imagine the stress that those poor people are going through but um, yeah, like, like you said yesterday, like I'm now living the life of a normal person. Yeah. Um, I now have all this spare time to get things done that I've been wanting to get done because, um, you know, prior to this, my only day off in the week was Sunday, which I usually spend doing YouTube stuff and, you know, just trying to like catch up on house cleaning or any of that sort of stuff that just gets left way behind because I... It's the sort of thing that, like, when you have one day off a week, you don't really want to spend it doing house cleaning. So, you know, you're sort of like, oh, maybe I'll do fun stuff instead. Um, whereas now, yeah, like, I've just got all these days free, and it's just... It, it's a real shock to the system. It's, it's taking some getting used to, and I know that is a real first-world problem. Um, but, yeah, it has been interesting. Like, the, this whole thing... Like you said, it is bad. It is really bad and I wish it would just all end tomorrow but um, it really is fascinating watching our entire world changing so freaking quickly mm. I mean 
it was only two months ago I was out celebrating my birthday and, you know, having a great night out with, like, tons of people and stuff. And, you know, now you sort of think, like, yeah, that, that, that was how life used to be. Um, so, yeah. But I know I'm just saying something that, like, everybody's already thought about and stuff. But, yeah. Anyway. Yes. The new normal, as they call it. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. And I think it kind of gets to a point where you kind of start to see all the things that we've been taking for granted little mm. things like oh going to the supermarket whenever you want well that <laughs> keeps changing to the point where now you have to line up to get into the supermarket and they're only letting certain people in at a time to mm. you know limit uh, exposure and all this stuff and Mm. And you know, going to the cinema was a was a luxury and, yes. a, and a great thing for some people. Nobody can do that now. Um, I know, and that's the one thing that's hit the YouTube movie community the hardest, I think. Um, and particularly for me, because uh, someone posted on Twitter last night or something. Um, you know, what was the last movie you saw in a theater? And I was like, yeah, what was the last movie? And I had a look. <laughs> that was Guns Akimbo. The oh, last no. movie I saw <laughs> in a cinema was Guns fucking akimbo and mm, oh, that funny. really bothers me a lot like it oh, could have would. been a good movie at least but oh well could have been anything but it had to be that one yeah but yeah oh well, I, I mean I, I got to um, watch I'm, onward I'm, I'm oh wait online though right uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last night I, I, I got to watch it because a friend of mine over in Canada was, um, he was saying, oh my god, I, I watched it on what is like my number one movie of the year. It's on Disney Plus. And I was like, yeah, no, it's not over here. And he was like, no, no, it is like it just came out over here. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know it came out over there. But Disney Plus is this weird beast that, you know, I mean, they only <laughs> opened up in UK and the most of Europe on March 24th, like yeah. months after everyone else got it. Um, so... Yeah, I was sort of thinking, man, I really want to see this movie. And so, um, how can I put this? I I hoisted the sails and cracked <laughs> open a fresh bottle of rum and had a parrot on my shoulder <laughs> and sailed the seven seas. Um, yeah, so anyway, I, I, I found a, a, a copy of it online. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I watched it. Now, for all of those who are like, oh my god, how dare you pirate movies, I am so freaking buying the 3D Blu-ray of this when it comes out, because I fucking loved that movie so goddamn much. Um, so, yes, I will be buying the most expensive version of it possible, so, uh, yeah. For me, pirating is kind of like a try-before-you-buy thing. Like, <laughs> I mean, sometimes, you know, movies are expensive to buy, and... True. You know, a lot of the times, you're not 100% sure if you do want to commit to a movie. Like Banana Splits, for instance. Fuck, I wish I downloaded <laughs> that. Instead of just blindly buying it off the fucking shelf. Um, so, yeah, a lot of times, like, I, I'll, I'll download something, but if I love it, I will buy it. Uh, and that was definitely one case. So, um, yeah, I know, like, I'll, there will be people who are like, oh, you, you, you know, you're just trying to justify doing something illegal and... Well, yeah, I am, but I don't know. I think it's a pretty good justification, especially when you see how many freaking movies I own. Like, you know, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I, I get it. I, I love movies. I love getting to review movies, but with no good income where I can't afford mm. to go and get movies. Last time I went and got a DVD, I think I bought three DVDs. And the whole time I was trying to justify to myself that it's okay to buy these three DVDs. Like, right. can I afford to do this? I'm like, oh, but it's a two for 30 or whatever. And I'm like, mm. okay, that helps. But I'm like, oh, but I really want them. Like, oh, but I don't technically need it. I'm like, oh, but I really want it. I'm like, <laughs> okay, in three years when I have money again, I'll come back for you. So, yeah, yeah. It, I, I get it. And I basically. Thanks to the fact that I, I have reviews and I ba or I post something on Twitter, I have a document of all the films that I watch, so mm -hmm. I know which films that I love. So I know the day I ever get a really steady income, I'm mm. you know, and the stores are open again, I'm down at JB Hi-Fi and I'm like, <laughs> I'm by the store, bitches. So <laughs> I mean, this is just uh, this is just uh, the prelude to when I 
come and yeah, you know, yeah. I think you know the, the only time piracy bothers me is when you get those people who are like you know oh why pay for a movie ticket when you can just download it for free like yeah. that shit bothers me. Um, you know, because I mean, fuck, I will always rather go and see him. I I really deeply regret that I didn't get to see Onward at the cinema. Um, like the last chance I had uh, just before everything closed down. Mm. Uh, before the release date of Onward, there was um, uh, advanced screenings. Like there, there was a press screening, but it was like nine o'clock in the morning or something, mm. about an hour and a half away from me. And I was mm-hmm. like on a Sunday morning, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm not making the trip that early in the morning." Um, so then they had advanced screenings to the public on yeah. the weekend where all shit started going down and. I even remember, like, I was so close to going, but, like, so many people were like, no, 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 you've you got to stay home and stuff. And so, yeah, I didn't go, but I'm kind of regretting that now because, like, I would have loved to have seen that on the big screen. But, of course, by the time this is all over, you know, that movie's going to be well and truly gone. And so, yeah, we're mm. just not going to get a chance to see it on the big screen now. So, yeah, but I would have, definitely. I probably would have gone twice, actually. I really enjoyed it. I find it's interesting watching uh, the p- the fact that we all are, v- unless you have your head in the sand, it, we're all very aware of how severe this is right now, and the fact mm. that it's still not slowing down. It is still mm. very much spreading, and it's spreading fast. It's crazy that I still see that there are Every time I'm like, I'm looking at that live um, video that you posted, I yeah. now get it, and then I show my mom now she's addicted to watching it. Oh, there's a lot of people who are glued to that thing. It's it's scary. Like, I kind of just sit there mm. frozen looking at it and looking at the numbers, and I kind of just want to start crying. And then I look at some countries as it's moving, and it's like, zero deaths. I'm like, oh, yay! Nobody in your country has died. This is wonderful, mm. wonderful news. Wonderful. And then they'll come back the next day and it's like 206 territories have cases. And then two days later, it's like 207. Like, no, no, there was a country that was free. <laughs> no, but no, you bastards, stop yeah, traveling. Yeah. And yet still with all that and knowing how severe it is, there is still a lot of entitled motherfuckers out there. Bitching oh God, yeah. about the dumbest fucking shit, and it's just like mm. the number of people I have to start unfollowing or muting or blocking is getting <laughs> redonkulous, because people are some. I, I'm saying people like, well, I watched everything in my watch list, and now I don't have anything to do with myself. When can I start going to the movies again? I'm like, I don't know. When people stop dying, you fucking. Yeah. <laughs> like we have we have so many streaming services there's so many things we could watch it's impossible to run out of things to watch mm. and even if with the number of people yourself included who have their dvd collections as their backdrop if people actually decided to sit down and watch all the movies in their collection they'll be good for a while like oh god yeah it's i mean yeah i've i've got um, probably enough to last a lifetime, realistically. Uh, if you count, like, all the movies and TV shows, like, I, uh, yeah, I, there's one, because, you know, at the moment I'm doing this series where I'm going through my DVD collection. Um, once I finish that, I'm going to tackle my TV series, which, uh, I have DVDs alone. I've got an entire bookcase full of TV shows. Uh, then mm. there's a couple shelves of Blu-ray ones as well. So, um... Yeah, I ain't running out anytime soon. But, you know, it's interesting, like, what you were saying before, you know, about, like, countries with deaths and stuff. Um, I was just talking to my family yesterday. They all live over in New Zealand. And it's just funny, the contrast between their country and ours. Whereas, like you were saying before about, you know, people have to line up to go into the supermarket. Here in Queensland, we don't have to. Um, it's I went to the supermarket a couple Yet. of days ago and Yet. it was normal i mean you know everyone was kind of keeping their distance from each other but yeah just walk in whenever you want you know it was um just so blasé and you know new zealand are under 
a really, really strict lockdown to the point where my sister was saying that if she went out to drive to a friend's place, if she got pulled over by the cops and said she was just going to visit some friends or whatever, she could be arrested. And, you know, it's absolutely crazy. But, like, when you look at that, that YouTube video, their whole country has had one death. Like, they're putting their entire country in the strictest lockdown after one death. We... Have, I think, well, the last time I looked, it was 30 deaths and we're still kind of mm. trying to figure out what to do. And it's sort of like, just do what they do, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. then we can completely stop this thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Our country is just always so slow to react to everything. It's crazy. Well, we're at least more on the ball than America. That's for bloody sure. Well, yeah, that's true with the over a quarter of a million cases now. I, I mean, the fact that I'm still seeing people bitching about... I mean, I for the record, I didn't vote for Scott Morrison. I bitched about him during the fires. I called him mm. filthy names. But I've been really impressed with how the Australian government has been handling it, how he has been conducting himself, doing all these press conferences. And it's the fact of the matter is that when he's asked a question... He flat out answers it. He gives you a real answer and just to make sure he does go into like, here's an example of what I mean. And then you go and look at Trump, who just does fucking word salad, where he'll say the same four words mixed up seven different ways, but he's not actually saying shit. And then mm. if somebody comes and says, well, this is what you said a month ago. He's like, no, I didn't say this. Well, you did. And here's the recording of it. He's like, no, you've faked that. That's fake. It's like, oh, my God, j someone just, <laughs> why can't he get coronavirus? Like, of all the people, he yeah, should get yeah. it. I know. But, I mean, we have at least started putting things into effect um, for people to get uh, money, people who are unemployed. It's like they weren't going to sit on their asses and go no we'll wait a while it's like nope this is what we're implementing this is what we're going to do to try and help people as opposed to america still can't fucking agree on a stimulus package so yeah unemployed people we, we are still, still screwed like i i don't want to turn this into a political debate because i don't we have really agree with about. scott morrison i mean you know things like when like the first stimulus package that they introduced was to support businesses because businesses are the ones that, you know, feed money to politicians and stuff. So they weren't looking after the people to start with. It wasn't until the people actually started raising their voices and saying, hey, this isn't right. You know, it's just uh, including the bushfire situation. Our government just seems very react reactive, like they're not proactive. They don't prevent things. They just, you know, wait till something happens and then try and deal with it. It's... Um, which isn't really a good way to... And that's what I'm saying. Like, New Zealand, you know, they just fucking locked the whole country down before anything really happened. And they have one death in the whole country. Admittedly, it's a smaller country than ours. But, <laughs> um, you know, I still think that was really commendable. Um, mm. Yeah. But, yes, we shouldn't turn this into a political debate because... <laughs> I'm sure people have already tuned out and switched off and left Probably. the pumps down. I mean, because... there are certain decisions. There are certain decisions I think are really dumb that they're doing. Like one minute, mm. they made the rule where if you go to the hairdresser, you can only be in the hairdresser mm. for thirty minutes. Bitch, this hair took seven hours. That's not an exaggeration. <laughs> I was in the salon for seven motherfucking hours getting my hair done. Oh wow! So I'm this like, this one took seven what? seconds. <laughs> So I'm just like, what, 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 what can anybody get done in 30 minutes? Mm. Like the only people who that could really benefit are people like my brother who goes in for just a little trim and a shave and he's like mm. there for like 10, 15 minutes. But yeah. then they're just like, oh no, we changed that and you can be in there now. And even the hairdressers are going, why? This mm. is not safe. The hairdressers are, yeah. are closing themselves down and the others who mm. aren't, well, they should be closed down. Like, I, I'm not saying I want people to be out of business, but who the fuck actually needs to be getting their roots touched up right now? <laughs> I got my roots. They're right here. Yeah. And I'm, I'm fine with it. It's a look. I've, I've never cared about my roots. and You guys don't need to either. Um, 
people bitching about it. It's not like we're going to go out and impress anybody right now. Exactly! And people (laughs) bitching about their civil rights. I'm sorry. It's a temporary thing. It's like, fuck Mm. your rights as long as you get to live right now. It's Mm. sacrifice your civil liberties for the time being so that Mm. you actually have rights in a couple months. So that you can live and experience them. So the fact people are like, well, you know, the police won't, you know, let people sunbathe and all this shit. It's like, why the fuck do you need to be sunbathing right now? That's the point. (laughs) You don't. (laughs) Fuck off. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, There's a a COVID hotline where you can call and dob people in who are breaking the isolation Mm. rules. I'm not going to name names, but let's just say I know someone who has called their neighbor with that hotline because their neighbor Mm. um, actually works for Qantas. So he had, he does international travel. So he had recently come back into the country. So those are the kind of people that you'd want to be making sure that they are isolating because they Mm. are at a higher risk of possibly contracting something. And it's midnight and he was throwing a party with a bunch of people over. So said person Mm. that I know uh, called in and said, I 100% know that he is, um, he lives alone and, but he ain't alone. And Mm. uh, people did come and knock on his door and then they came and knocked on his door again 12 hours later. And I don't know if that's because of the phone call and they're just, you know, trying to once again check in, or did they do a background check and go, "Oh, this guy travels internationally. Mm. Oh, Maybe wow. we, we 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 better uh, kind of check because um, yeah, it's crazy. I think was it my mum said Florida or Ohio or somewhere in America. I think where they had people on a list where they go around and check to make sure that you're self isolating. The police will come and knock on your door, make sure that you're there. And there was like a list of right. 300 and something people. And when the police went to go check that everybody was home and alone, 99 people went home. Oh, wow. 99 Holy people shit, went, fuck the lot of you. I'm going to yeah. go and do whatever I want to do. And I'm like, yeah. See, wow. this is why I don't care if the police are stopping people on park benches mm. and going, please go home or all this mm. stuff because people aren't caring. So, yeah, Mm. fuck you and your rights. If you're going to risk people (laughs) dying, then you're a dick. And by all means, you deserve a nice whopping fine. That's one way for the government to make some money. (laughs) Just fine all the dickhead. It's all good. (laughs) I actually... um, There's plenty of uh, them. A couple of nights ago, I had a moment where, oh, man, I nearly got extremely angry so I'm, I'm sitting here at my desk working it was really late at night anyway i had the tv on in the background and they had the nbc today show came on and they had a thing from new york city where they had um who was it uh christina aguilera performing yeah. out in the street with a big stage and everything and there were thousands of people crowded around and it set up in the top corner it said live and i was like You've got to be shitting me. Like, New York is one of the biggest hotspots right now. And there's all these people out watching Christina fucking Aguilera. And um, they had a, a thing on the bottom where they had, like, people's <laughs> tweets coming up. And one of the hashtags was Christina Today. And I was like, okay. Being one of these people that doesn't just jump to conclusions straight away about things I see and starts going on the internet like, I want to see your manager... Um, you know, I, I did a moment of research. I thought, okay, let's have a look at this hashtag. So I typed in Christina today and yeah, luckily I found out it was from 2018. The TV station was just playing an old clip. So that was, I know, but oh my God, like seriously, I saw that thing. I was just like, if this is happening right now, I am getting on that fucking on Twitter. I'm just blasting every single person I can who is involved with this thing. Cause yeah. Um, and there's somebody that I, I kind of sort of know. He um, he actually is a uh, a nurse or something in a hospital in New York, and he's been posting stuff on Facebook at the moment about you know what it's like, you know what he's dealing with firsthand, and mm. you know this is I mean this is stuff from someone who is right there in the middle of it, and you know like there was one post that he wrote where um, he said something along the lines of how 
he probably wasn't going to sleep that night, not because of uh, what he's been through, but just in anticipation of how many deaths he's going to have to deal with the next day and stuff. And I was just like, oh, man, like, these people, these people are fucking heroes right now. Seriously. Mm. Like, every medical professional, every paramedic, every doctor, nurse, anyone who is dealing with this shit. Because, like, I don't think we really understand exactly, like, just how bad it is that, you know... Um, that they've got it. Like, we don't sort of... I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of us don't think outside of our own small bubble, you know, like... Yeah. Uh, yeah, but... Yeah. These people are, are really dealing with it tough right now, and... Uh, yeah, it's just another one of those things that makes me sort of quite thankful about just how lucky I am right now. It's... I keep people keep saying things like, ah, oh, you know, this is bringing the world together. Is it? For starters, every country is saying, no, don't come here. So mm. there's not much <laughs> together with... No international travel. Everybody everybody to their mm. corners. But every time I, I see something and I saw this little video that was going around and it was a doctor in Saudi Arabia, I think it was, and he came home from working God only knows how many hours. And his son, who looked to be about two years old, just ran up to give his dad a hug and his dad backed up against the wall mm. going, no, no. And the poor guy just fell to the floor and started crying. And I oh, nearly wow. started crying watching it because I'm like, that... Like, the things that must have been running through his mind of, I can't touch my child, what mm. if I nearly would kill my child, is, like, mm. then reflecting on everything that you've just been through at work, and I'm waiting to see compassion in the comments. Compassion was not what I saw. Some person mm. who was being an insensitive dick, who was just like, He's overreacting in being stupid. All he should do oh, is just wow. go and have a shower and then go and hug his son. I'm like, are you fucking <laughs> stupid? Yeah, yeah. And then other people <laughs> who were saying he shouldn't be there at all. Da, 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 da. It's like, if he's a doctor, I think he knows enough and maybe he knows that he's not infected, but he's still scared that there's a trace mm. on him or, or something Either way, it's just he knows that he's in an environment where he knows he can't be interacting, even if he is okay. He can't take those mm. risks. And just, the, the, I'm like, wow, y'all are insensitive dicks. Like, yeah, just, yeah. Is compassion really that hot? It's free. Mm. It's free. You yeah. don't even got to break a sweat to do it. But people are like, oh no, <laughs> it's too much. I can't possibly. And I'm just like... I can't. And then and then when you hear about all the religious pastors and evangelical dicks who are like, come to church, we're throwing a party. And I'm just like, this is Darwinism at work right now. This isn't God. This is Darwinism. So Yeah. Although it kind of makes <laughs> you wonder, like, why they're doing that if we sort of, if you know, like you said, if we live in a world where you can't touch children, like, why would they be keeping churches open? Um... It's sort of, when you think about it, it's kind of lucky maybe that Michael Jackson isn't around in this time. Oh my god! You, although, to his credit, like, Let he did wear a surgical mask and gloves, so maybe he could still touch children, but... Let uh, the anyway, man sorry, what were you saying? in peace. Oh my god. You're terrible. You're terrible. <laughs> anyway, man. thanks everybody for watching. Uh, no. <laughs> Oh, come on. People expect this stuff from me. The thing now. is, is that right now, right now is like the one time anybody can really say anything that they fucking want, no matter how terrible it is. Because it's like, what? You're going to come down to my house to beat me? You're going to get arrested on the way here. So good luck with that. So. And, I mean, what did I, like, all I said was that, you know, priests, uh, Catholic priests are renowned for touching children. I'm just stating facts here. I'm, you know, it's it's true, <laughs> isn't it? It is. Well, Please continue. Well. <laughs> oh my god! How about to change it up? Would you like to try and play a game, Dan? Yes. 
Not the sword. As long as it doesn't involve touching children. (sighs) That's not my idea of a fun time, but apparently I think it is for you, in which case I think we need to end this friendship here. (laughs) <laughs> Man, I'm just I'm just ending friendships left and right. I'm doing great this fucking week. Yeah. I no, have, that's not my thing. I have this game here called Spoiler oh, Alert. Wow. This is not yeah, product. Right, this is not product placement. I am not being sponsored. I wish to fucking god I was. Yeah, I, really I have this game to... called Spoiler Alert, available now from all good game stores for only twenty five ninety nine or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how much it actually cost me. Yeah. I got this and I wanted to play it for my birthday. Yeah. But it was my birthday and nothing ever happens on my birthday and nobody wanted to play with me. So it kind of went to waste. It's like the movie version of Taboo. Do you know what Taboo is? No. Oh my god. When this lockdown is over, we're hanging out, we're playing Taboo. Taboo is okay. my favorite game of all time. You have a card, there's a word at the top of the card, and then there are five other words underneath it. The whole point of the game is you have to describe the word at the top, and you can't use any of the words on the card to do so. So typically when I would play with my brother, whatever the word was, I would make some kind of movie reference, and he would do the same, and that's immediately how we'd get this. Instead, Mm -hmm. this game is like movie taboo, where... You have the name of, like, a movie, a TV show, or a book, and it gives you three words that you can't use to describe it, but you have to still describe it anyway. Although it's funny, I did one that was for, um, I think the film was for Frozen. I tested it on my mom, and I said, let's just say the three words it says I can't use are not remotely any words that I would use to describe this movie. And she goes, well, (laughs) what would you say? And I said, let it go. She went, oh, Frozen. I'm like, ta-da! Right, right. It wasn't hard. Let me see if I can try and... I'm not looking. Let me see if I can hold the... Can you read this? I'm trying uh, to hold go it. Go that way. Okay, stop there. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, okay. That's that's easy. Okay. I didn't. I can't read that. I'm just pushing it up to the webcam. You yeah, yeah, yeah. And... That's okay. I got this. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, what is Douglas Adams' most famous book? I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, um, somebody who tries to grab a ride with a car going like that. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Booyah! Ah! <laughs> this is the best game ever! Oh my god. See, I, I seriously never heard of that person, but... If I'm thinking of um, Hitchhiker, there's only one I one somehow, that is one of the little factoids in the back of my head. I've never actually read the book. I actually used to own the book, um, but I never read it. So, but I just know it's Douglas Adams. I don't know. That's one of those trivia things that is lurking around inside my skull. Oh, not bad. Okay, I will try. Yeah. Okay, I will try one. Oh, okay. Um, Guy Pierce can't remember shit. Memento. Ten, yes. <laughs> awesome. Oh, this is easy. Yeah, again, I would not use any of these words to describe this film. What were Let's the words? See. I can't use enterograde amnesia, Polaroid pictures, or reverse order. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I can't really see how you can fail at this game. I, I, anyway, let, give me another one. You'd have to be... I'll, I'm trying to flip your card upside down. Because there's two on every card. So, let's see. Oh, okay, right. There we go. Uh, yeah, okay. That's super easy. Yeah. Okay. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Uh, recent Disney remake directed by John Favreau. Mowgli is the kid. Oh, the Jungle Book. There you go. This, this game is way too easy. Well, we might come up with ones we don't know. Uh, okay. Oh, who, uh, who is the actor in this one? Russell Crowe has a, has a certain disorder, but he's also very smart. A Beautiful Mind? Yes! I haven't even seen that movie, and I still knew it. (laughs) 
wow. You could have Were said, you? Russell Crowe has a pretty brain. <laughs> Does he, though? Does, well, know? apparently. He's got a beautiful <laughs> mind. It's the same thing, isn't it? Shut up. <laughs> he's got Is a he? sexy noggin. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what Russell Crowe's got, a sexy noggin. Okay, now you're sounding like Mike Myers doing Fat Bastard. <laughs> Get, Get in, in my, my belly! belly. <laughs> yeah! Alright, give me another one. Come on, let's keep this rolling. People are going to start tuning out. This, this, like, is how, this is how we're spending our quarantine time. We're playing movie trivia games because my trivia game is on hiatus. This is okay. the best fucking podcast ever. I love it. I know. We're just all we need is you to pull out the schnapps and me to get my bourbon. Okay, here's the next yeah, one. Yeah, except I don't have any. Uh, okay. Oh, all right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 Cool. 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 Uh, all right. So, oh fuck me, I've forgotten who directed the film. <laughs> Anyway, it's got Josh Brolin in it. Javier Bardem was the bad guy. No Country uh, for Old Men. Sorry, what? No Country for Old Men. Exactly. Who directed uh, that again? I've just gone blank. Uh, was it Brothers, wasn't it? Something Brothers. Was it the Cohen? Cohen Brothers? Yeah. Yeah, the Cohen Brothers. Okay. Right. There you go. All right. That was easy. Yeah, I had to watch that one for a, a Switch Movies podcast episode. Actually, it was episode two, and Brittany was a guest host, and that was doing um, book adaptions, and that oh, was okay. the movie Ben made me watch. I wasn't a fan. Oh, I loved the movie. That was actually one movie that initially I owned it on DVD, but upgraded it to Blu-ray, because, oh, fuck, I love that movie so I, freaking much. There are certain films where I don't enjoy them on a personal level but I can look at them objectively as a critique and say this was mm. really well done performance was yeah. great it's just not for me yeah. and th like film yeah, like um, Green Room for example I wasn't mm. a fan of that film but I thought it was brilliantly done and the performances were great and there mm. were a lot of great themes in it I'm just like yeah but I'm really bored watching it that's not yeah, the film's fault that's I was like me. that with Little Women. Like, uh, I could tell it was a really well-directed film. The performances were amazing. The costume design was out of this world. Like, pr the whole production mm. design and everything. Um, but I've pretty much forgotten most of it, and I would never see it again. Because, yeah, the story was just not my kind of thing. Like, yeah. But it was a really good movie, you know. So, yeah, no, I totally get that. I think that's one thing that people, a lot of reviewers don't do. They mm. can't look at a film objectively. They immediately say, because mm. they didn't like it, it's therefore bad. It's mm. like, well, no, you sometimes do have to take out your personal taste <laughs> and say, maybe it might not be my cup of tea, but mm. this was well directed, it was well written, so this was well performed. It's got all the great technical stuff that means it's a good mm. film. So obviously it's going to appeal to a lot of other people. Obviously I'm just not yeah. one of them, but does that mean it's yeah. shit? No, it's not. Exactly. Couldn't agree It just more. means you're not going to go and get it on DVD. Yeah. <laughs> but this is not giving me another question. Come on, I'm pumped. Okay, it's my turn. Oh, ooh. Yeah. Um... Uh, E.T. <laughs> no, I'm trying to remember the actor. I think it was a young Malcolm McDowell. Okay. Planet of the Apes? Uh, brainwashed to Beethoven music. No, that was music. Roddy McDowell. Sorry, what? Brainwashed to Beethoven music. Oh, uh, A Clockwork Orange. Yes. Psh, come that on. That was Malcolm what McDowell, was wasn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what were the words that you couldn't use? Uh, classical music, droogs, and gang. Yeah, okay. Wow. Yeah. I'm just they just said I couldn't like... actually say the name of the composer. They just said I can't say classical music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess maybe people who aren't, like, extreme film buffs might find this game challenging. But, yeah, for us, this is a walk in the park. Anyway... Hold another one up for me. Okay, tell me I have it the correct way around. <laughs> you have it the correct way around, and this is going to okay, be great. extremely easy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Angelina Jolie won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress, also has Winona Ryder in it. Oh, um, Girl Interrupted. Yes. I have this on VHS. Woohoo! I have it on DVD. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a TV series. Right. Uh, where it is majoritively an all female cast, and everybody is in prison. Orange is the new black? Yes! <laughs> oh, thank fuck, because, yeah, I don't watch a lot of TV shows. I have <laughs> never in my life seen an episode of Orange is the New Black. No, uh, no. But that was a very good description. Thank you! You can't say drugs, flashback, flashbacks, or inmates. Oh, okay. Why? I'm guessing okay. you can't say part of the title either, because I thought the word no. orange might have been on there. No, but anyway. you, you, you can't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Let's see. Oh, hang on. There we go. It's it's hard uh, trying to put it put the card ooh, directly in oh, the yeah. webcam frame. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. Can you hold it up again? Yes, I can. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, one of Natalie Portman's very first ever roles. She was a little kid with a hitman. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh god! Oh god! Oh my god! I I know this because of Gary Oldman. I think it was. Uh, Jean Reno was the yeah, hitman. Yeah, yeah, Gary Oldman was in it. Uh, Leon the Professional. That was it. Yes! Uh, for some reason, like, Les Miserables kept coming to my head. I'm like, that's not it! <laughs> no, that definitely wasn't it. This wasn't a movie about the French Revolution? God damn. <laughs> Yeah, there was um there was a time when I when I first like completely became obsessed with Gary Oldman, I just had this thing where I was watching every film in his mm -hmm. filmography. And yeah. so that was why I watched Leon the Professional and God, his Gary's performance in that is so hypnotic. Even oh, like God, when he does that performance in everything. Oh, totally. Like, when he does that, like, pill-cracking thing, there's just something where you're mm. just like, it's creepy, but I'm yeah. mesmerized. <laughs> Have you, uh, did you, um, when you were doing your research on Gary Oldman, did you see the movie Sid and Nancy? I actually haven't, I have it, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, God, that is arguably my it. favourite Gary Oldman performance of all time. Um, I've, I've seen the bits way of it. That like he clips. embodied Sid Vicious, like because I'm I'm a really really big Sex Pistols Sid Vicious fan, uh, and uh, you know I've seen a lot of interview footage and stuff with Sid. And yeah, my God, he became that. Like you watch that movie, and it's like that's not Gary Oldman. You know what I mean? That's what I love about him. He is he is a true chameleon. Oh, God, yeah, he's so versatile. It's why I can't believe it took so many years for him to win a bloody Oscar. Yeah, 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 totally agree. Uh, but yeah, no, you've I, got to I, see I Sid and Nancy. That movie is amazing. I don't care about the Oscars, but I cried when Gary finally won. I'm like, I'm so happy with you. <laughs> nah, that's really totally justified. It. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Oh. Um, this one's a book. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is a book that got banned in a lot of places, and a lot of people went on burning missions with this book. Uh... I can't remember why they were burning it. They said it promoted something. Promoted <laughs> what? I don't know. They. I remember uh, people were bur burning it because they said it promoted, I don't know, something bad. I don't think it actually did. Um... Um... Well, uh... uh I don't know I, why I'm thinking the Satanic Verses. <laughs> no. Because this one is one that I actually had to read this in high school, but I really hated having to read for English class, so I just read the Cliff Notes version. And then... Do you know who the author is? Um... Um, no, but I'm going to Google it because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this in a thing about movie trivia? Uh, I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe it was adapted into a film. Maybe. Uh, it was uh, written by J.D. Salinger. 
Oh, Catcher in the Rye? Yes. Woohoo! Ah, brilliant. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I didn't know anything about burning of it or whatever. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, it was, Never a read se- it. it was a severely banned book. Oh, like, okay. So many places were just like, no, this is a bad, yeah. bad book. I'm like, okay. I'm not much of a literature person. Uh, yeah, but anyway. I don't think it was banned anywhere in Australia, though, obviously, because I was reading it in school. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh! Well, next one. <laughs> okay, way too easy. Put it down. Oh! Alrighty then! Oh, that's like every Jim Carrey film, but I'm going to go Ace Venture, Pet Detective. Bingo! Too yeah, easy. Yay! <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, the first film in a series of Liam Neeson films where his family members end up missing. Taken. Correct. <laughs> I couldn't say the I will find you line. It said that I couldn't. Well, you didn't need to, really. <laughs> that was way too easy. I could have just said a film where Liam Neeson is a awesome dad. You could have just said... Liam Contrary Neeson, and I probably to would have what said Deadpool said, <laughs> although that was, that was funny. It's like, but hang on, it's not his fault. His yeah daughter went to France, and her, you you don't get in cars with strangers, okay? Did she not learn this, idiot? Yeah, exactly. Stupid whore. Uh-oh. Oops, I accidentally looked at the card. So I'm gonna she was a child and you're calling her a whore. Okay, here's yours. Alrighty. I would not have said any of those things. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Um, Alright, so this was a movie remake of... Well, actually, this might be about the TV show, but there was a movie remake with Ben Stiller and Luke Wilson, a uh, 70s detective show that starred David uh, Soul. Starsky and Hutch. Yes! Yay! Brilliant! <laughs> Woohoo! I also never watched... I didn't actually watch the movie either. Oh, okay. I ah. have it on DVD and I don't know why. Ugh, I hate this movie. So, that narrows it down a little. Banana splits! <laughs> a movie that I hate starring Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling. Um, La La Land. Correct. Shame on you. That was my oh, number one movie that of that movie. year. Fuck that was that my number movie. one movie of that I year. I don't fucking care. My brother went and sorted the movies like five times, and then I finally got it, and I'm like, wow, he really loves this. He's like calling it his favorite musical in recent years. Everybody mm-hmm. was, you know, going on about it. I sat down and watched it, and I'm like, and people had even said, oh, the first musical number is my favourite. And I'm watching it, I'm like, mm. good God, I'm bored. <laughs> so. Whereas I sat down, I saw it at the movies, because it came out, I think it was like, I'd, I'd already formulated my top ten for that year, and that was like the last movie I had to see. And so I went Uh-oh. and saw it, and I remember sitting there, like, that opening number, just sitting there just going, my God what it would have taken to put that on screen like it just eh, blew my enough. mind and i was just i was gripped from that moment on and i i just i loved it because it wasn't a typical love story i mean like these two people ended up going their separate ways at the end you know like i loved that so much i loved that it was realistic you know it wasn't yeah like i said a typical happy ending sort of a thing so um, yeah, no, I, I love the movie a lot. But that's just I, I don't need realism. Else. I don't need realism in my musicals. I don't need non-realism either. So fiction, fiction, what, what, you know, whatever the opposite of realism is. So fiction. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't, I don't right. care. I just, at the end of the day, I want to be entertained and I was not entertained. So there we That's go. fair enough. Okay. Ah! Oh, God, I love this movie so much. Uh, Yep, that's easy enough. Okay, so this movie had Claire Danes uh, as a celestial body that fell from the sky. Yes! Of course. I love 
love that yeah. movie! Yay. I love that movie so much! Um... I, yeah, I know actually, some people think, who call it the shittest movie ever, and I say no. <laughs> My the first time I saw that movie, I at the time I was working for a company that filmed uh, sports games. Which, yeah, it was it was a camera job, so you know that was fine by me. But uh, it was like yeah. sport. But I got sent up uh, about two hours north from here. Uh, to film a week of inline hockey games, which was kind of okay. It was kind of like ice hockey, but on rollerblades. But in my off time, I went to this cinema because uh, I wanted to see some movies. And um, I remember the, the, the reason I'm telling this story is because I bought a ticket to Stardust. I went into this theater and I kid you not, there was like, I think, 20 seats in the cinema. Like there was four rows of five seats and a screen like it was the smallest cinema i have ever sat in and it was almost like a little private screening room or something you know and um maybe you were actually in someone's house in their private theater (laughs) oh well yeah i mean it was a residential address no it wasn't really um (laughs) but no i just remember like it was the funkiest cinema i've ever been to i loved it to the point where like, I would almost drive two hours to go and see, you know, something in this cinema again. Like, if it's still there, this is like... Oh my god, this was a lot of years ago. Um, but yeah, no, it was, that was really incredible. Like, it was just one of those things that, like, I, I always remember my first screening of that film because it was in that tiny little cinema and stuff. So, yeah. But it was a really good movie, too. I, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Aww, that's cute. Me like that. <laughs> um... Okay, uh, this is a film where, uh, Rebel Wilson gets to do a lot of singing. Cats! With Anna Kendrick. Oh, that would be pitch perfect. Correct. I thought I went, damn it, I I didn't say Anna Kendrick first because I'm like, wait, she also did Trolls. But then I thought, Rebel Wilson hasn't done anything else. I forgot about cats. <laughs> I'd like to yeah, continue look, to forget about cats. To be honest, I, I knew it was going to be pitch perfect, but I just wanted to say cats. like Because oh, yeah. it was the Jellicle answer. Actually, the... Um, I, I, oh, God. I, I wonder if I still have the video. Um, not for your sake, for mine. Uh, yeah. my, my niece, obviously I haven't seen my nieces in forever, even prior to mm-hmm. the to lockdown, but we were babysitting my eldest niece at, um, one evening and she starts, um, singing Razzle Dazzle from Chicago and, oh, okay. and I just, being that I know Chicago, I know the music, I was pretty much raised by a man who lives on musicals, so I know my musicals. Mm. I'm just doing something like, um, mum, why why is she singing the songs from Chicago? I'm just like, (laughs) I'm like, Aubrey, how how do you know this song? And she goes, Mm. it's the song that goes off at school when the bell rings. I'm like, what now? Oh, wow. (laughs) I'm like, they didn't do this shit at my school. Like, yeah. I'm like, well, alrighty then. I'm like, go to school, <laughs> teach these kids musicals, alrighty. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then a little bit later, she starts singing. <laughs> she starts singing a song from Cats. She starts singing about Macavity, and I'm like, oh wow. what? What? I'm like, hang on, it's just singing Cats. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, hang on, I'm grabbing my phone. I'm going, just double checking, I'm like, no, she's definitely singing Cats. I'm like, I don't know all the songs, but I do know most of them, and I and I do enjoy the music of Cats, because I do love the music of Andrew Lloyd Webber. Mm-hmm. And so then I threw up YouTube onto the TV, and I found the song from Cats, from the Broadway musical version, and I put it on, and she was full on singing along to it and dancing, oh, going, wow. Macavity, Macavity. I'm like, <laughs> okay, recording. I'm like, this is so freaking precious. I'm like, this is yeah. this is the highlight of my day right here. And she did, <laughs> and then I put on Razzle Dazzle as well. Mm. And so she was in, Give me the old. <laughs> I'm like, 
this is epic. <laughs> and I sent the videos to my brother. I sent the cats mm. one first and he's like, how the fuck does she know cats? I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't know. She, I'm like, uh, well, if she'd been spending time with you, that would have been my answer, but she ain't. So I'm just like, she goes, oh no, they play it at school. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I'm like, school has changed since my time, apparently. Yeah, but, absolutely. Go. We only but, had a bell. We didn't have music or anything like that. I know, right? I'm like, maybe I would have liked school more. No, I wouldn't have. That's not true. No, school let's not shit. go there. <laughs> no, school was the Bay Marie of my life. Um, uh, wait, was it your turn or my turn? Uh, it's my turn. As in okay. for you to read me a question. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, um. Oh. Chin. Um. Taryn Edgerton. Yeah. Uh, in really nice suits, kicking ass. Kingsman. Which one? Oh, I should really describe which one. Uh, the first one. <laughs> Kingsman. Oh, hang on. It had a, a longer name, didn't it? Yes, it did. Oh, shit. Kingsman. Oh, that's not fair. Hang on. <laughs> Kingsman. Uh, hush. Uh, hush. Shh. Sorry? It's a shh. I'm trying to give you a clue. It's a shh. shh. Is, that's the clue, is it? Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, it's sake. very hush, I, hush. I mean, I know the, circ the second one was Kingsman it's hush, the Golden hush. Circle. You can't talk about it. If I tell you something and you say you can't tell anybody, oh, then secret! It the Kingsman's secret gentleman spy. No, the secret. <laughs> Fuck. No. Uh, the secret people, men. Uh, the secret. I don't know. Oh, come on! Surely Kingsman's enough to win that. One. Not according to the card, and it's Kingsman Secret it. Service. Well, yeah, that was that's what I said. <laughs> no, it's really not. <laughs> okay, here you go. Okay, easy. Um, a uh, another remake of a TV show with Tubbs and Crockett. Michael Mann directed the remake. Um. <laughs> A uh, big city in Florida, and they're cops. And Don Johnson was in the TV show. And how are you not getting this? Uh, Just because you say it's a remake, a remake of what? I don't know. What is a everything's is it the a remake of these days? Florida. It's like the biggest city in Florida. Miami. Yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> you got the president, and then you've got the something president. Miami Vice? Yes! There you go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I didn't use any of the words I couldn't use. Uh, I can't remember what they are. I'll check afterwards. Yeah. Uh, okay, last year... They did a live action remake of this film, but it technically is not live action. Cats! No. <laughs> but it did have cats in it, kind of. Yeah, I know, because it's. I know it's The Lion King, but I just wanted to say cats again. I'm going to try and use the answer cats for everything now. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, oh, actually, hang on. Oh, right, that first one's going to be difficult. Uh, oh, no, it's not, actually. Yeah, no, this is good. I got this. Uh, 80s comedy, uh, I think Andrew McCarthy, and I can't remember the other guy, and they're dragging around a corpse and trying to make him appear like he's alive. Oh, wow. This, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Come on. 
they have a corpse and then <laughs> they've got to try and pretend he's alive. I don't know. For oh. some reason, I, I, I... All right, let's break this down then. <laughs> um, what do you call Saturday and Sunday? Weekends. Yeah, and uh, uh, what's we- the first name? Uh, okay, of- okay, hang on. Okay, there's okay. So I know there's a film that has that it, week weekend at Bernie's something. Like yes, that? that's it. Oh. Weekend at Bernie's. Very good. Oh. oh wow, that took way too long for you to get that. I've never seen it. Oh, I know oh. nothing about it. Mm, it's amazing. Well, now I'm temp- now with that description, I'm tempted to go and watch it. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, people walking around with a dead body. I guess Swiss Army Man wasn't that original. No. Well, <clears throat> yeah, vastly different sort of circumstances that they were in. But anyway, cats! Uh, uh, okay, it's... it. This one is the TV series, but I haven't seen the TV series, so I'm going to describe the movie mm-hmm. that remade it that had, uh, oh crap, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Channing, Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. Oh, 21 Jump Street. Correct. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't in Cats. I hope not. I hope he wasn't No. Alright, that was ridiculously easy. Uh, (laughs) Okay, this is a, was it 2004 film by Jared Hess uh, about a nerd who goes, gosh, freaking idiot. And he had a brother named Kip, who bought a time machine. Oh, wait, no. But it wasn't really, of course. Really quirky, quirky wait, movie. I was, but... Wait, I was, I was going to say something, but then you said Time Machine, and now I don't know if that's the one. You went, well, gosh, you idiot. Say? Well, when you went, gosh, idiot, my brain went to Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. There's a, I mean, so many really things happened in that movie, that. but his brother Kip bought... Uh, online he bought a thing that was meant to be a time machine of course he got ripped off it wasn't really a time machine and ended up just hurting his balls but um (laughs) or napoleon's balls but yeah um oh my god the love i have for that movie runs deep well see this is an educational thing we're having fun and we're learning about things i know i i I can i can at least say i have seen napoleon dynamite i just don't particularly remember yeah. everything about it. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I Cats. have not seen this film and the only thing I know about this film is that these aliens in the film are referred to as what Americans think we call shrimp, which we don't, and uh, I district, think they eat McDonald's. District nine. District nine. Yes, you are correct. Yeah, yeah. Super easy, that one. Any Americans paying attention, the clue that we're saying is because we call it fucking prawns, not shrimp. Yeah, dumbasses. Because they're prawns. I know. In fact, it, it, it wasn't even an Australian who said shrimp on the barbie. It was an American. Just in exactly. case anybody was wondering. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, yep. Okay. Easy. Uh, this was a uh, Tim Burton film starring Johnny Depp, who had oh. big cutting things on his. Oh, Edward Scissorhands. Yes, that's the one. Although, if you hadn't said that, J- Tim Burton, Johnny Depp, that's a long list. That is a yeah, really- yeah, yeah, exactly. So I narrowed it down to his appendages. <laughs> Uh, best cameo in that film, Vincent Price. Yes! Oh my god, I love that you said that, because, yep, yeah, I'm a massive Vincent Price fan. Oh, he's so good. He is oh god, so, yeah. so good. That's, like, one of those, you know, people in the past who, like, I would love to have actually met. Like, 
you know, when they say that, you know, hypothetical, hypothetical thing um, of, you know, which three famous dead people would you like to have at a dinner party or whatever, Vincent Price is always one answer I choose because it would have been so fascinating to be able to talk to that man, you know, just that that gentle disposition that he has. Like, yeah. Ah, love him. Love him! Okay, okay, so my question is, what is your favourite Vincent Price film? House of Wax. I, I, would, I, would, I would have to agree with you there. I love that movie so goddamn much. My I mum seen... actually <clears throat> saw that movie in a cinema in 3D back in the 50s. Like, Nice! I'm so jealous of Cute. that. I, I love all of the incarnations of House of Wax from Mystery of the House, uh, the Wax Museum to House of Wax to then even the mm. modern House of Wax. I honestly love them all. I, I, don't re- I don't regret what I'm saying. I love them all, but the Vincent Price one is my favourite. There was just something mm. a little bit more um, macabre and yet also kind of emotional in it. Like, even by the mm. end, you, you felt really sorry for him still. Like, you couldn't 100% see yeah, him as a bad guy. Even though he's going yeah, around, yeah. you know, killing people and stealing bodies. You're like, I'm like, I still feel mm. bad for you, dude. I still care. Mm. I still care. Yeah. No. Nah. Oh my god, I love that movie so much. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay. Oh! Okay. This film is also a musical, and the film is a musical... Cats! Oh god, I walked into that one. Uh, no, but it is about a, 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 to- a, a talking... Bitter fauna, or, no flora from outer space. A uh, little shop of horrors. Yeah, I couldn't say plant, so I was trying to think. Ah, of the other one. <laughs> right, right, right. You could have just uh, said Audrey, and I would have said little shop of horrors. Yeah, except I didn't know that by saying Audrey would have automatically uh, gotten that for me. So there you go. Well, you do now. I do now. So if, if yeah. you know, I ever come, you know, when this is over, if I ever come to hang out at your place and I play this game and it's like you and me versus like two other people, now I know what to do. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Hang on. I can't use. Oh, actually, hang on. This is going to be tricky. Uh, okay. All right. I'm ready. So mm-hmm. this has Michael Douglas and Glenn Close. Fatal Attraction. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, okay. I couldn't use a fair or stalker or rabbit. Like, a fair would have been a very hard word not to. Oh, no, actually. Because this is the thing, there's always like other ways of saying stuff. Like, you could have said, you know, Michael Douglas has a wife, yet he fucks this other woman. Like, so you don't need to use a fair. Has anybody else noticed that Michael Douglas did a lot of films where the fact that he couldn't keep it in his pants gets him into a lot of trouble? (laughs) That's true. That is true. It's it's an ongoing thing. I mean, let's see. There's Fatal Attraction, Basic Instinct. Um, Mm -hmm. There's that film with uh, Demi Moore, which I can't remember the name of. Oh, um... Ah! The, The Disclosure... I know. Um, fuck, I can't remember either. Guaranteed he was the victim in that film, but if he had just not done anything, he wouldn't have gotten in trouble anyway. <laughs> so, again. There's a lesson in that for all of you kitties. Yeah, just don't have sex and life will be fine. Yeah. Celibacy is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's face it. Pretty much everybody is in forced celibacy right now, except for the people who actually live with spouses. Yeah, I know. Son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> um, I have not seen this, and yet it's been on TV enough times where I've seen lots of bits of it. Um, right, cats. A lot of people love this movie. Uh, it stars. Uh, it had. Uh, oh God! Wh- oh, what was her name? Uh, I think it Tony Collette is in it, and there's a family. Muriel's going... wedding. No. Oh shit! 
I haven't seen enough of this film to... I can't use any of these words and they would have helped. Um, uh, there's a, the, a young daughter, she's got glasses, and they're all traveling so that she can go and compete in something. Oh, Little Miss Sunshine. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love well, that I movie. couldn't say Brilliant. I couldn't say yellow Volkswagen bus or beauty pageant. Oh yeah, that makes things difficult. <laughs> like those are the only things I know about the fucking movie. Yeah, yeah, those are three. Except very I know things, also so. one of the characters dies in the bus, but I don't know whether he was a dad or a grandpa or what. So I couldn't really. It was a grandpa, so. and uh, that was uh, yeah. Alan Arkin's character. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. Alan, Alan Arkin used to be in, um, he used to play Grace Adler's father in Will and Grace, and then for reasons I don't know, they recast him. Oh, okay. Which is weird. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I've never that. seen that show, so I, I can't comment. It's, it's little things that don't make sense. Um, I don't know why you'd recast, um, him because he's not dead yet, so yeah, he could very brilliant. well... <laughs> He could have. He could have come back, um, and then there was. Um, they recast one of Grace's sisters, who was originally um, portrayed by Gina Davis. She's also not dead, so she. <laughs> so she could have come back, but instead they're like, "Yeah, we'll get somebody else to do it." And I'm like, "But, but well, it was funny they, when it was Gina Davis." Maybe they had like other projects that they needed to work on or something. Like it, it happens. But, but it was funny when it was Gina Davis. Yeah, I know. But these are things beyond our control that we need to just accept and move I, on with our lives. I did say the other day, and I thought that this was incredibly touching, is um, Debbie Reynolds used to always appear on the show as Grace Adler's mother. Right. And she was just so fantastic every time she appeared because she's this mother who just loves belittling her daughter and is always having to be the center of attention she was just absolutely brilliant in the role <laughs> and so when she passed away and they revived the show they had the character as having passed away as well um instead of her being alive and off screen they're like no there's no one else to play her and we're not going to pretend she's not here. So they they flat out even had pictures of her in the background. So like she's still there mm. like in tribute. And then they just had, um, <clears throat> they just had her granddaughter appear in an episode playing her granddaughter. Oh, wow. And I kind of started crying. I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? You, I'm like, Oh god, they actually got Debbie Reynolds' granddaughter playing Debbie Reynolds' granddaughter! Like, I thought that was really sweet and touching. So when she's, like, talking to Grace and they're, like, saying, you know, Grandma was this and Grandma was this and she's doing, like, an impersonation of her, I'm like, who better to do it than mm. <laughs> her actual flesh and blood? So I thought yeah, that that yeah. was actually... I thought that was really touching. Yeah. <laughs> um... Oh, shit. Is hard. I can't look, so I don't know if I've got the card the right way around. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's fine. You can actually put the card down now. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. The third thing that I can't say is really important. All right. So this was a movie from I think it was around two thousand. Had Devin Sawa in it. Ali Lata. Um, Kerr Smith. Uh, about a bunch of. Kids who were going on a trip to France. Cruel Intention. Oh no! Oh, uh, fi Final Destination. Yeah, that's it. I wasn't allowed to say airplane explosion or cheat death. Like cheat death is kind of an important thing. Um, that is like the key component of the films. So yeah, yeah, that was that one was actually kind of tricky, but yeah. You knew the actors and stuff, so that's all good. Well, all right. you lost me. You lost me with the first two, but then you said Kerr Smith, and that's why my brain went to Cruel Intentions. Oh wow! Three, because he was in Cruel Intentions three. Like <laughs> my brain wasn't oh, okay. with one and two. Went straight to Cruel Intentions three, and then yeah, yeah. you said travel, and I'm like, oh no, there wasn't any traveling in that movie. Final Near. Destination, it is then. All right, here we go. Last one. Let's bring it Kerr home. Smith 
Kerr Smith was uh, also in season seven of Chump, if anybody's wondering. Well, there you go. I also think he actually looks very similar. Now, I could be the only person on the planet who thinks this, I don't know, but he looks a lot like Olivia Wilde. Like, seriously, if you look at a picture of the two of them, like, they have a very similar facial structure as far as cheekbones, nose and stuff. I'm going to open two tabs so that I can look at them side by side. Yeah, I just, I really find, like, I think they could be siblings. I don't know. Like I said, maybe I'm the only person who thinks this, and that's fine, but... Well, let, let me just, uh... Maybe there's, like... Okay, maybe, like, one picture when he's actually smiling and showing his teeth and she's smiling showing her teeth I can kind of see a similarity but when the mouth is closed I got nothing so. okay no I'm just talking about like I said just facial sort of you know composure like I just find a very similar thin nose and cheekbones and stuff like yeah yeah I think it might just be you on this one Yep, okay, that's fine. Well, if anybody <laughs> agrees with me, fire down in the comments and, and back me up here. Come on, people! I need help. I, and okay, anyways. my my last one... Yeah! Uh, Matt Damon franchise. Uh, the Born Identity? Correct. <laughs> ah, alright. This game's just too easy for people like us. I mean, sometimes it's hard. Like, if I had to do the other one on the card, I couldn't have because I don't know what it is. Well, um, oh, okay. Do you want to test me out on that one then? Oh, well, you don't know what it is, so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> what is no, it then? Uh, bringing up baby. Oh, okay. I know the name. Uh, yeah, but I don't... Well, in that case, what you could say is that you have consumed an infant and you are vomiting said infant maybe <laughs> like yeah twit. Huge. actually if you'd said that i probably would have actually got it in a strange kind of way yeah but anyway my brain works I in think, mysterious ways i think as fun as this game is it would be made more entertaining if all the players were drinking because then it's actually a challenge yeah, that's true. Because let's face it, try like, try to didn't... describe things while intoxicated. That yeah, yeah. Thing. I mean, the only one that I almost kind of sort of got wrong was that I couldn't remember the Secret Service after Kingsman. But I think Kingsman was the key component there. Like I, you knew that I knew the movie, so you know there is that. Um, and yeah, that but as people like one. to say of my hosting skills on my game show, which we're not talking about today because there is no game show, you know, they yeah. like to say that I'm a bit of a bitch or a hard ass and I deliberately make things difficult, so. <laughs> yeah. No, that's <laughs> So the fact enough. that you're so, just like kind but... of shocked that I would not allow you to get away with just Kingsman <laughs> is like. But overall, you, like, yeah, we, we did pretty good with that game. Like we, we didn't get a lot of things wrong. Yay! We know movies! We know movies! Yeah. But also, can you tell that we're just both bored and we're just rambling on about crap? Like, there's just no rhyme or reason to this episode. Did it even have to happen? No, not really. But we didn't well, have anything else to do, so why the fuck not? Exactly. Well, speak for yourself. I, I've i got lots of things I need to do today. Actually... Um, yeah, I've got to, I've got to finish off my series of my DVD collection tour, which is, I, I still can't believe how well that's going. Like, it just baffles me that people would actually sit down and watch some idiot talking about DVDs for like an hour. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I... Don't get me wrong. I'm really grateful. Like, I, holy shit. And I've even got like an old childhood primary school friend of mine who... I haven't seen since primary school has been commenting on my videos and stuff and I mean you know stuff like that just means the world to me and yeah so I gotta do that um oh and I'm, I will be doing a live stream tonight because I just uh, I, last night I was just 
I was way too comfortable. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I sort of, it was getting towards midnight and I was like, I just can't imagine sitting there trying to, you know, get into character, so to speak. Uh, so yeah, I wound up playing Grand Theft Auto till the wee hours of the morning and that was fun. Um, but yeah, so no, I've got, a, I've got, I've got stuff I need to do today. So yeah, I'm, I'm good. I know how you feel about the finding a weird when someone's like, yes, I, I loved looking at the tour of the stuff that you own that I do not. <laughs> like, I don't get it at all. But, you know, I had, um, after I did my first um, ch- um, Box of Shadows unboxing, mm-hmm. I had people, I when I recorded that one, I decided I wasn't going to do green screen. I was going to flip my camera around and I had my setup in front of my charm collection. So, right. you know, kind of being like, I'm introducing the new, fr- you know, the f- new friend to the group. <laughs> it's it's joining. Mm. We're just <laughs> looking at the new edition. And then after that, I'm like, you already know it. And then people kept saying, oh, my God, you should do a tour of your charm collection. We'd love to see all mm. the stuff that you have. I'm like, why? And mm. people kept asking. And I'm just like, OK, I'll figure out when to do it because I have a lot of shit. <laughs> and I sat down and I spent about three hours recording me going through all my charm stuff and then managed to condense it down into, mm. like, I think an hour and 40 minutes or something. Right, right. And still, it's got, like, 400 views or something, which... Yeah. I know compared to a lot of people, that's like, oh, that's not a lot of views, but we're talking about me just sitting mm. there and just saying this is stuff that I own <laughs> and wasted money on. It's not a waste of me, but a lot of other people. And people are like, whoa, mm. I think it's the biggest collection I've ever seen. I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> I try. I, I try. No, I was like, that. Yeah, yeah. I was like that, you know, with like for my 100th video, like years and years ago. Um, yeah, I, I decided to do a tour of my Blu-ray collection. And I, you know, it went for over an hour. And I honestly thought like five people were going to watch it. I mean, yeah, today, it's, you know, it's on over 840 views and... Um, like that just baffled me, you know, that like the, there is this community out there of people who really enjoy that kind of stuff. And so I was like, oh, okay. And that's why I started doing like, you know, every couple of months I'd do a Blu-ray update and then, yeah, I just decided like recently, cause you know, we got spare time now, uh, that I'd what? tackle my DVD shelf and I, I thought it was, I thought I'd actually get the whole thing done in one video, but oh man, <laughs> Yeah, that that definitely. But by the time I got a few letters in, I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So I had to split it up into like three videos. Um, oh, there'll be four actually, because I'll, I'll then do my TV series after that, um, which is going to be quite an eclectic bunch of stuff. Because I've got yeah everything for. I do have some recent shows, but then there's other things like. Yeah, Gilligan's Island and Get Smart and like all the sort of old classics um, that I really nice. like and a whole bunch of animated shows that no one's ever heard of and stuff. So yeah, that's that's going to be a bit of a different video, but oh well. But they're fun to do. Like, yeah, I don't know. You sort of like just get to do like a little miniature review of things in sort of 25 words or less. Um, uh, yeah, so no, it is fun. I'm, I'm really enjoying doing it. And I just love that there are people watching it. Like that's, yeah, absolutely huge. So... Yeah. You, you never know what people are into. Like, there are some videos mm. I click on, I'm like, who the fuck would want to watch this? And then you're like, oh, it's got two million views. I'm like, why? <laughs> I'm going, but did people actually like it? Or was it just one mm. of those morbid curiosity clicks? Like, two million yeah, of them. Yeah. But, because <laughs> there is just some crazy shit. Like, I, I remember, oh, God, we're, we're, we're going back. We're going, we're going way back for this one. I, I remember mm. when um, Two Girls, One Cup was making its round. <laughs> back in the day. And I, all my friends were talking about it. I'm like, what the hell are you all talking about? And they said, we can't tell you. It's something you have to experience for yourself. Oh, cruel I'm like, people. that doesn't sound good. I'm like, I don't know what it is. But the fact that yeah. you're making it sound so ominous does not mm. make me wish to seek it out because now I'm scared. And the first thing I thought, because there were so many guys talking about it, I'm like, oh, this has got to be a porn thing. And they're like, 
Oh no, <laughs> it is so beyond that. I'm like, all right. And then I one yeah, day, it's bad. I I I think I one day, uh, it must have been like a week or two into the, I'll call it a phenomenon, that I was just like, okay, I'm tired of now everybody knowing what it is, but me. Okay, I mm-hmm. went in search of it. I regretted that search so much. Yeah, <laughs> that's just, that's something I just, that, <laughs> I mean. It's not something you ever want to see again, ever. And it, no, mainly because no. it gets burned into your brain to the point where you don't need to see it again because <laughs> it's there. It stays there. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember watching it mm. and the whole time I was just going, <clears throat> dry reaching the entire time where when it was done, I was, I, uh-huh. I'm pretty sure I may have actually thrown up in my mouth, which wow. would totally be on brand for that film. Um, and then to make matters worse, while this was still going on, I guess it was a couple weeks later, I had some friends over, and he just... And you recreated uh, it. That's disgusting. That's vile, you sick Cats! Never mind. (laughs) But he, um, I had, uh two or th- three friends come over I can't remember now and one of them's like hey you know two girls one cup and we're all like yes let's not go there <laughs> and he goes no I found this website that has other fucked up shit just like it I'm like we're mm-hmm. all like cool we don't want to see it he's like yeah well we're gonna see it anyway so he takes yeah. my laptop he gets up the site and the videos that he made us watch I still to this day mm. I will never forget them and I only yeah. ever watched them once and we were all, <laughs> we were all just running to our corners trying not to throw up then we're all oh. laughing at each other trying not to throw up and mm. then it got to one video where one of my friends she was very heavily pregnant at the time and she was almost crying cuz she's like I don't want to see this while there is something inside my stomach right now because (laughs) now I'm scared it's not a baby. And I'm just like, oh, this is some fucked up shit. There was, let's see, I'm trying to remember. There was one man, one jar. I don't know if you ever heard. Don't know that one. It's a guy who, I'm going to, I'm feeling queasy already. (laughs) It's a guy who squats and basically shoves a mason jar up his ass, clenches his ass, the jar shatters in his ass, and he is picking the glass out of his ass. Why? There is Why? just... Bl- Why? Just, he's I've just, never even heard of that thing. <laughs> he's oh, just, fuck. That's way worse than what I and glass thought you were going to say. And... I, oh wow, why no? I, I don't need to see that. I don't ever need to see that ever. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> None of these things do. I don't yeah. know why they exist. There, then there was um, one man, one stump. Oh, God. Or was it two men, one stump? It doesn't well, matter how many men there were. There's a stump. <laughs> it's not the stump you're thinking of. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, what, what's this video about? <laughs> the people need so, to know. Come on. <laughs> so there are two men... Engaging in kind of intercourse, except let's just say the man who is giving is not using his penis, he is using his stump of a leg because he doesn't have half his leg. No, that's exactly what I thought this was going to (laughs) entail, some kind of amputee (laughs) stuff, which... Strangely, I don't find as perplexing as the jar thing. Like, yeah, I don't know. The, 
the other jar still oh, gets man. to me. And this explains last... a lot about you, really. <laughs> Why does it? I didn't make myself watch this. I didn't choose this. I know. My but friend you barricaded didn't have to the door and either. forced three girls to watch this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You need well, the, new the, friends. The, we're not friends anymore, so I already took care of that. Uh, okay, good. The, the, the third video he made us watch, which oh, was the God. one that set off my pregnant friend, was uh, one woman, was one octopus. Was she bringing up baby? No, it was one woman, one octopus. Oh, fuck. All right, no. Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> nope. That's, that's, that's all we have time for as far as <laughs> Ashley's trip down really horrible memory lane. I don't want to know about the octopus. I have a lot of trauma in my life. There are a lot of people who have impacted my mental health in a very negative way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, I, I, look, to be honest, like, if this, you know, if we get, you know, several months of this isolation thing, I'm probably going to end up making a video called One Man, One Monkey. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Which is better than One Man, One Cat. Oh, I'll, I'll just say that right now. Yeah. Oops, this took a dark turn. So, um, how about that sports team? You don't even like or watch sports. Yeah, I know. That's that's how desperately I'm trying to change the subject. Yeah. Well, well, this went exactly, I think, how we expected it to go. To kind yeah, of pretty derail well, No, we got times. to play a freaking card game. That was amazing. That was, Ow. like, wow. That's my favorite. And I hope anybody who was watching or listening played along with us. Yeah! Maybe. Somehow. Let's see if you actually In were able brain. to guess any of our clues, which frankly yeah. aren't that hard. And for all those people who want to find two girls, one cup, or one man, one jar, or two men, one stump... <laughs> or one woman, one octopus, Ashley will leave links down below in the description box. So go I right ahead and click on those and let us know what you I thought. I am pretty sure all those domains do not exist anymore, and for that I am eternally grateful. <laughs> yes, There are yes, some indeed. things that should not exist on mm -hmm. the internet. And there are yep. some things that people just don't need to see, and I think mm -hmm. my descriptions have been more than enough for people to get the idea. Oh, yeah. Although there may be some people who are now inquisitive about the one woman, one octopus. If you are that 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 inquisitive, uh, you will feel free to ask me. I will etch it into your mind and scar you for <laughs> life. But just know, yeah. you came to me. You came to me, not the other way around. So... Uh -huh. Please do or not just get do the what I do involved. and move on with your life and just just forget about it. Like don't don't That's go true. there. I'm but gonna be really happy is... that I didn't actually ask about it. I, really seriously happy. I know, but you now also know that any time you look at a jar, you're going to have this image in your head, and any time you see an octopus, yeah, this is going to come up, and you're going to think. Uh, so many bad things, because you don't know the scenario, so you're going to play out a lot of bad scenarios, and just so you know, one of them is going to be the correct one. Well, I'm just really glad that he didn't use two jars, because imagine trying to fit Jar Jar up your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, music cannot fit up there, okay there? <laughs> I love Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, <laughs> music going right up that bunghole. <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh man, bam, bam, bam. That's so we're 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 what? I think we're done. I think we are so done. Yes, yes, indeed. I... That's been like almost two hours of like the most nonsensical rambling that has ever been committed to YouTube. So uh, I'd be really surprised if anyone is still here. Are you still here? Are you still here? If you are, then yeah. then then let us know down the thing that you made it to the end. Just like the poor we, octopus. We, the, I mean, this, this, this didn't need to get done, but you know what? I figured some people may find our nonsense rambling somewhat entertaining, and some people are yeah. going stir-crazy. So, 
Yeah. Why don't we all go stir crazy together? Well, I'm not because Yay. I have an immunity to isolation. It's kind of my thing. Yeah. Um, but the rest of y'all are apparently losing your fucking minds. So <laughs> this is my contribution to the situation. So you're a, you're a true hero. I I know. God, yeah, I know. <laughs> And all like right. they say, not all heroes wear capes because I don't have one. <laughs> I just have a witty personality and a lot of sarcasm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you got one of those things. So anyway, um, cool. All right. Well, there you yeah, go. We're going to end it here because <laughs> I'm I'm now exhausted from having to throw so much personality out. I haven't had to do that for a <laughs> couple of weeks now. So, and I'm just hungry. Um, <clears throat> you should go and eat then. So, I will. You can uh, check out uh, Dan's channel, links to all his stuff. You will find them down below, whether that be YouTube, SoundCloud, or iTunes. All the stuff is there in the information section or description box, depending on where you are. You, I now want to still... change the name of my channel to One Man, One Channel. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. And now only the people who have heard this will understand why. Exclusive! So, <laughs> you can... Dan is still putting up content. He's still finding things to do. So, you can go oh, and check yes. him out. That was the other thing I need to do. Is a review of Onward. Yeah, I knew there was something else I had to do today. So, wow! I've actually got a movie review coming! Holy shit! You heard it here first, folks. So, yeah. well, actually, chances are... By the time Actually, this no, you is up, didn't yeah. <laughs> you'll probably have seen the review before you see this, but whatever. Just know that it was yes. said here first originally. All, technically, all three people who ended up watching the review because who cares what I've got to say about a movie that came out ages ago and blah blah. Anyway, doesn't matter. I don't care. Anyway, he still has content, it. so you can go check that out. I have been lucky enough to be given some screeners to watch. I have watched two. I've got two more to go, so reviews. How did you get screeners? Um, desperate times. I thought People you didn't would... have any links to to distributors and stuff. I don't. Have you been hoisting the sails and cracking open the rum? <laughs> I didn't say press screenings. I said screeners. Yeah, a screener is a DVD that is sent to you from a distributor and... and okay. Or it's an independent film where the people have the film online that only select people can watch with an exclusive link. Oh, okay. Right. So, all right. Cool. So not not actual movies, but yeah. <laughs> that is offensive to the people who worked hard on these independent projects. You I know, but half the shit I say is offensive, so it's fine. <laughs> well, you've got me there. So I've done two of those. I've got two more to go, and once I do that, I will be posting all the reviews up. So far, the two I've watched, I have really enjoyed. Um, we'll see how the next two go. But... Um, yeah, we keep trying to end this, and then Dan goes and says oh, something, yeah. and then it doesn't end. So, it's ending. We're officially, we're done. We're done. Bye. Maybe cool. we'll do this again soon, while we're all in isolation. Or not, because maybe, you know, Dan will have hung himself. So, yeah, if possible. he doesn't... No, it's not. Not a chance. If he doesn't, if he doesn't maybe we'll, we'll see you again in a couple weeks, or in a month. Yeah. We don't fucking know. Let's just make this up as we go along. But in the meantime, everybody stay safe and remember to wash your balls, no, hands, and and don't don't go out there. Just don't go out there. Stay inside and and do things that are fun to do inside. Stay People. home and masturbate. Well, you could do that. <laughs> oh, hang on, were you telling them or me? Like, yeah, anyway, never mind. Okie dokie. <laughs> Stay home and masturbate and wash your hands afterwards. Yes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I got nothing. That's, that's, that's good enough advice. There you go. Alrighty. Uh